like to welcome everybody to the seven critical metrics to worship in a recovering economy. I'm John Bartos. I hope everybody is having an unbelievable 2010 so far. On behalf of Main Sequence, I'm fired up to be with you guys today to talk about something that not everybody's fired up about, which is really the dollars and cents. It's the numbers. It's those things that we need to pay attention to to get better at what we do specifically now as the economy is just crawling, if you will, crawling back to try to get back to normal. A couple things that people ask me when I'm out talking to different people, or, or I actually have three brand new recruiters today in-house. I'm trying to train and get up to speed so I get them on the phone and make them successful, help them be successful in the recruiting industry. People say a couple things. Number one is, you know, I don't, I don't really understand the metrics of recruiting. You know, I, really, I, don't, I don't really get that. I'll hear somebody say, you know, I, I don't want to make a lot of calls. I just want to make quality calls. You know, just really, really good calls with the right people. We're all here. You know, I, I, I don't really want to put the metrics down because I don't want to be micromanaged. You know, I, I, I really don't want people to see what I'm doing and have my boss over me. Let me share with you a couple things. First of all, if anybody's into sports, you know metrics. Uh, I have in front of me the key metrics for hockey, for baseball, for basketball, for football. Matter, matter of fact, I try to do uh, the quarterback rating scenario, and, and I don't know if you guys ever saw this before, but get online and Google if you want to see how they calculate a quarterback rating. I mean, you almost have to have a degree in physics uh, and be a physicist in order to even calculate the quarterback rating. We have always taken a look at efficiency and how good we are at something based on numbers. It just happens. In baseball, it's you know certain things such as what's your batting average, your earned run average if you're a pitcher in baseball, uh, you know, how many RBIs have you got, how many strikeouts. Numbers have always been looking at. And in baseball, the funny thing is, is if you're three out of ten, meaning you get on base three out of ten times, meaning you're batting 300, that's pretty darn good. Well, you know, as in sports, it's the same thing as recruiting. There are certain things about numbers that we have to take a look at to understand if we're good at this business or not and what we have to do to be good at this business and specifically now. If we take a look at the things that happen in our marketplace, we've got to make sure that we're on top of our game specifically because the economy is so slow right now. First of all, a couple things. Let's talk about the differences based on markets. Not all markets have been created the same. I have three marketplaces in my office. I'm on the phone every single day. Uh, I have to be on the phone at 9 o'clock. I'm an example for my people. I'm in the middle of a bullpen. My office has three market segments we're in. We're in healthcare IT. We do business with consulting companies as well as hospitals. On the marketplace, we're in SAP, and we do business with consulting companies as well as SAP end users. The third marketplace we're in is supply chain. Every single one of those marketplaces is different. If I said to my healthcare IT recruiter that, hey, you need to have as much activity as my person in supply chain, my healthcare IT person would laugh. Healthcare IT is a little hotter right now, doing well because of Obama throwing some money out for American Recovery and Reinstatement Act, where supply chain is very, very slow. So there's differences going on right now based on the marketplace and what markets are recovering faster than others. If you're in construction right now, you got to make a few more phone calls, obviously. If maybe you're in you know, building nuclear power plants all over the world and you're providing nuclear engineers, it may be a little easier. So the whole point being is a lot of what we talk about are going to be very generalist ideas that you need to embark on. Now, the numbers are going to change based on your tenure in the marketplace as well as how hot your marketplace at any given time. I just want to share one little bit of wisdom with you, if you can. You should really understand the recruiting business as well as most professional baseball players understand the baseball marketplace. Baseball players all know what their RBIs are, their batting averages, and what they mean, uh, how many errors per 100 that they actually make. You should know as much or not more about the recruiting marketplace, your chosen endeavor. Today we're going to take, and not a deep dive in this market, because if you want to do a deep dive, we can go way, way down to the ratios that need to be looked at for recruiting firm. Today we're just going to take a look at a marketplace, because in the marketplace, we're going to have to spend a little bit of time on what are the key factors to help you successful today, today in the marketplace. Now, they say we're going through a jobless recovery, and let's see what that actually makes means. First of all, unemployment rate came out on Friday. 
it was 9.6%. Now, for most people would say, oh my gosh, it's 9.6%, this guy's still falling, the economy's not recovered yet. But if you guys want to, jump on Google, ask for the employment situation for the month of September 2010. That's a report I take and actually worship every time it comes out, which is the first Friday of every month. And what it basically said was the unemployment rate is 9.6%, which is, which is high. But when I looked at Table A-4, what it really said is those folks with a college education in 25 years and older, the unemployment rate is 4.4%. All right, you're thinking, okay, John, why are you bring this up? Why is that important to me? I'm just a recruiter. Why is that important? <laughs> Here's why, I'll, why that is so important to you. Number one, most of us recruit experienced people. We don't get people right out of college. Uh, to place at our client companies. Number two, they typically want people with at least an associate degree, but more likely an advanced degree, like a college degree, and potentially MBAs that they're looking for. The unemployment rate's 4.4%. Most economists agree today that 3, 3 to 4% is full employment. So here's a dilemma going on in the marketplace. Our clients think that things uh, are great because they can get candidates any time they need to, Unfortunately, it's not true because really when you look at the real unemployment rate for the marketplaces that we recruit in, it's at 4.4% or less. And you know what? We need to make sure that the numbers coincide. So the jobless recovery, yes, it's going to be a jobless recovery, but not for your marketplace. We talked about unemployment rate and the real unemployment rate. But if I take a look at deeper dive in unemployment, here's the deal. If there's 4.4% unemployment for college educated and 25 years or older, most economists agree that between 3 and 4% is full employment. So here's a question. How many people, A players, which is the top 10% in the marketplace, is really unemployed? The answer in that is not even 1%. So realistically, our clients are looking for people who are gainfully employed. So our job is to go out there and not post on Monster, Career Builder, Dice, Ladders, whatever's out there. And I apologize for those job boards who are listening to this presentation. But the real fact and the reason why they need you is because you're the only one. You as an executive recruiter are the only ones out there who can go in, find where the A players are, and bring them and attract them to your client organization. Your client organization isn't doing it. HR is not doing it. That's only you. But the way to do that is watch your metrics, and I'll share with you how you do that to make sure you're doing the right thing. Average talent is easy to find. Great talent is still extremely difficult to find in this economy. And your clients obviously desperately will need you today. But is there a magic formula? That's why I want. Is there something that we know that's a magic formula that will allow me to be successful if I look at metrics? And the answer is yes. <laughs> there sure is. There's a magic lamp out there that if you rub it three times, there's a better chance you'll be successful than others. And here's a theory of metrics for everybody out there needs to know. In our marketplace, there's certain things that allow you to be successful. And some of those, it's basically quantity. And quantity, quantity, quantity. And what I mean by that is, if we're looking at this business, is I'm only going to do this business, make a few phone calls, but they're going to be quality calls, um, I can tell you that that person may go out of business fairly quickly. Because this business is all about quantity. And recruiting is absolutely a science. I have a personal coaching program that I coach uh, managers of many recruiting organizations all over the U.S. And all I need to do is ask them a couple questions when somebody wants me to coach them, either a big producer or, or even a recruiting owner. Here's a question I ask them first. Here's what I say. Okay, uh, you want me to coach you? And, and I, it costs a lot of money for me to coach him. So I say, okay, there's two questions for you. Number one, what was your phone time yesterday in terms of how many hours you were actually on the phone? Not thought you were on the phone, but what did your phone system say? How many hours you connected on the phone? That's number one question I ask. The second question I ask is how many dials did you make? That's all I need to know. And by taking a look at those two numbers, I can tell what the basic problem can be. Now, if those numbers are good, meaning that they're on a the phone, they make a lot of dials and they're on a the phone a long time, then I can take a look at advanced metrics. Uh, unfortunately, 99% of the time, those numbers are bad, and we have to start from the very basics. And let's talk about this for a second quantity activity metrics. When I bring a new recruiter in, and for those who are tenured out there, congratulations for, for making the recruiting industry. Nine out of ten people who start in the recruiting industry this year will not make it through the end of the year in recruiting. Just not do it. And uh, I've had many people ask me why they don't make it. And I said, this is a tough business. It's a very tough business, but not really. This business is all based on quantity. 
the idea when you get into this business and when I bring a new employee on board, and I got three new employees training right now in my next room, but my whole goal this week will be to not only train them, and then next week will be getting them conditioned on how to do this business, which means getting them on the phone. There's certain things you need to look at in this business. And number one, their quantity. I got to make sure that people are on the phone long enough in this business to stay in business. And we'll talk more about that theory here in just a minute. So quantity metrics are critical. But there's also results metrics that we all need to take a look at. And that's a result of the activity that you're doing. So if I make a lot of phone calls and I get a quality candidate, that quality candidate is a result of the quantity of phone calls that I've made. Or if I have a lot of phone time, I know that whatever metrics can come from phone time, that, that's a result metric. So there's quantity metrics that we all need to take a look at. And we'll go, go over those very specifically. And there's also results metrics that we'll take a look at. We're going to start from the very basics so everybody can get it. But there are also quality metrics known as ratios. Okay, So we have quality met quantity metrics, how many times I'm making dials and how much, how much on the phone. The results metrics means I'm making placements and send outs and getting quality candidates and getting job orders. And there's also quality metrics that tell me how good I am, what I'm doing. That's your on base percentage. That's your batting averages. All those percentages are ratios that tell me how good I am at what I do. And we need to take a look at all three of them. Now, a lot of people say, hey, I'd rather do quality metrics, not quantity. Here's the basics in life, everybody. You'll never get quality or get good at what you do unless you do a lot of quantity. So when I take a look at metrics, the most important thing I'm looking at is that you're doing a lot of numbers. When somebody comes new to my company, I let them know before they even join my company, I'm expecting a minimum of 80 calls a day. Yeah, it sounds like a lot, but it's really not. I'm looking for 80 calls a day. Eventually, I'm going to get you to three and a half hours of phone time, but you won't get three and a half hours of phone time right away. The reason being is because that quality won't be coming from any conversation if you have somebody in our marketplace just yet. It won't be. So I need to see volume from you. So the idea is, in order to get quality, in order to get good at what you do, you got to have the quantity. And that's how the business of recruiting works. If you get the quantity of, of calls you make, the market connect hours, the number of candidates coming in, if you get a lot of quantity going, eventually you'll get the quality and get the skill set you need to be successful. And, you know, metrics will change all your metrics will change based on tenured market variables. They absolutely will. I have a senior person in my office today that has a three-to-one send-out to placement ratio, whatever that means, and we'll get to that in just a second. But I also have a brand-new person in my office that went to 50-to-one first-time send-out to placement ratio. But because of the quality uh, of what these two individuals were so different that I know that the tenured person understand what quality was, that that person doesn't have to make the number of calls or the phone time as the new person did. And we'll talk about that, that changes that occurs as somebody gets very good at this business, very good at this business. Let's talk about the key ratios. Here we go. I'm going to get them all out. We've got 30 minutes. Buckle your seatbelts. Don't put your hands outside the ride at any specific time because here we go. The first thing that I look for is connect attempts when somebody comes on board. You have to have the volume when it comes to recruiting, specifically in a recovering marketplace. The reason being is because today when somebody gets a job order, we jump for joy potentially in a new marketplace or a marketplace that got hit pretty hard like housing, construction, uh, automotive industry, manufacturing in the U.S. Wow, did that get devastated. In any of those marketplaces, when we get a job order, we get all excited and want to work on it. Mm, what we need to do is get more quantitative things on a go to make sure we only work on the good stuff. So the first thing we look at in terms of quantity, quantity metrics, number one is connect attempts or call attempts. Uh, from your phone, cell phone, email, IM text. The second thing we look at is market connect time and how long I'm actually on the phone on a daily basis. The third thing I look at is marketing presentations, which means I'm out there going for a job order, how many presentations, which means I connected with somebody, not leaving a voicemail or sending an email, that I actually connected with somebody. The fourth thing I look at is candidate presentations, which means I'm trying to recruit a candidate and I actually got a hold of somebody, so I'm giving them a presentation. And also, I'm looking at how many calls per day I'm making. Now, here's what happens when somebody's brand new. They'll come to work. If you're new in a recruiting marketplace, congratulations. It is the best marketplace in the world. It's the toughest 50,000 tough job in the, uh, in the world. It really is, recruiting. But it's the easiest $250,000 a year job, if you get what I'm talking about right now. First of all, the things I look for, I need to make sure somebody's 
making the dials during the day. I want it like, like Pavlov's dog who salivates when a bell rings. Remember that guy's in high school? I need to condition recruiters, new recruiters, on being on that phone. And in the first two weeks they're with my organization, it's going to be on their best behavior. Aren't they? What, what, when you're new at your job, aren't you your best behavior your first two weeks? You actually show up on time in your first two weeks, don't you? Now, after three months, you, you come in late. You know, you go out to the bar on Thursday, so Friday you come in late, and all those things happen. But in the first two weeks, with your co you're with your new company, you're typically on your best behavior. So what I do in my organization, I need to see 80 phone calls. I'll plan calls for you. All you have to do is like a monkey dial the phone and probably leave voicemails because that's what nine times out of ten happens. So what the idea, though, is condition somebody new on how to learn this business, be on this business. What I mean by that is I've got to condition you to be on the phone all the time. Here's the secret to recruiting, guys. Recruiting is like owning a store, any store in the mall. Let's say it's a Harley shop. We had a big Harley run next to my house. I saw thousands of Harleys this past weekend. But you own a Harley shop in a mall. When you come in at 9 o'clock, you pull that sign over from close to open. People come in and they can buy stuff, whatever, colors, leather, a new Harley, whatever it is from you at your Harley store. You know, when you want to go talk to the lady next door who owns a flower shop, you put closed on your sign and walk out, lock the door, and go talk to them. They don't want anybody stealing whether really, your Sportsters or uh, Heritage Classic or any of the, the bikes you have, so you lock the door. You know what? The problem with most recruiting firms and recruiting offices and recruiters themselves when they're new is they, their store is not open long enough to stay in a business. Because when you're on that phone, your store is open. When you're off that phone, phone your store is closed. People don't get that concept, so they think they can be on the phone for a little bit and then type on a computer, send an email, blah, 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 whatever, talk to the neighbor, go get a drink, use the bathroom, whatever happens. The goal, everybody's conditioned to do this business, which means be in your marketplace, stay in your marketplace. So when a new, new person comes to my company, it's all about connect. I want to see you uh, actually making dials. It won't be connect. It'll actually just be dials. The second thing I look for is once I see enough dials are happening in the third or fourth week, I look for market connect time. It'll start at about 30 minutes a day, and they'll make 80 to 120 calls. Then it'll go down to making 60, 70 calls, but their market connect time will crawl, creep up to three, three and a half, four hours a day. That's when I know business is being done. That's when I know they're in the marketplace long enough to give them a chance, to give them a chance to be successful as a recruiter. And, and, and without those two things, I can't dissect anything else that's going on because there's not enough quantity going on in their marketplace to give any quality. So unless I've got enough quantity going on, I can't help them get better at what they do. So today, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you're in a marketplace and you have less than two hours of phone time and you're making less than $50 a day, the first thing I would say is time to change that. Get on the phone. If you want to change your life, if you want to get income rocking and rolling, if you want to make that $250,000 a year or higher, I got, I got friends of mine who make a million, million, five of you in the recruiting business. You can do the same thing. It starts with attempts and market connect time. You start monitoring that and worshiping that first. The biggest problem with recruiting is you're not open for business long enough to stay in business. And it's a absolutely true. And I see it with 99% of the recruiters out there. Now, there's also results metrics we look for. And that's, you know, if you're in marketing, it's job orders per week, how many you're getting. It's the job orders to search assignments you're getting. Search assignments, by the way, is a very qualified, it's an A job order, if you will, meaning that if you bring a candidate to the table, they're hiring them and hiring them right away. Third metric, and we look at is first-time send-outs per week uh, in terms of how many send-outs you're actually getting. And uh, those are the numbers we actually look for, is three to five. Uh, if you're in the recruiting side of business, I'm looking for two to three quality candidates a day. What does that mean? That means there's enough candidates coming to me where I got two to three I'm going to send to my client companies. And then I'm looking for presentation on job orders five to eight a week. What does that mean? That means if I'm marketing, I'm actually getting a hold of somebody and giving them a market presentation. Jim, it's John Bartos with JSI. How you doing? Have you talked to us before? We do executive search specifically in the Epic Marketplace, and we work with hospital CIOs all over the country. And you know what? We're seeing a trend in the marketplace that says finding quality systems analysts for the EPIC ambulatory module is almost impossible to find, which is a reason that I'm calling you today. I found an individual who's a top. That's a marketing call. And what I'm looking for is actually getting a hold of people specifically to give those presentations to. And if I give five to eight really good marketing presentations a week to new clients, Rock and roll. That's the numbers I'm looking for to be successful. And then signed agreements. So now we have signed search agreements on a, uh, uh, they have to sign our agreements coming in. So we send out a search agreement, they sign it, bring it back. I'd like to see two to three, five year rock and roll in. 
So that's the kind of numbers we look for on a weekly basis. Now, in terms of ratios, now this gets kind of boring, guys. I'm going to go through it real quick. Critical on ratios is the first time to send out the placement ratios. Um, I've had employee uh, employees that had a 99 to 1 send out the placement ratio. All right, boys and girls, what that means. For every 99 people I send out an interview, face-to-face -face interview, one of them gets hired. And that's bad. That's a bad thing. That means we're doing a lot of work and making no money. And nobody wants to do a lot of, a lot of work and make no money, right? So what we do is we want to take that down to five to one. The best people are three to one. Every three people we send out face to face, we get one, one specific person coming in. By the way, the reason for the uh, high send out the placement ratio is number one, your job orders are no good, or number two, you can't match quality like your matching skills from a, what the client wants is what you're giving them uh, is out to lunch, or three, you don't set expectations with that hiring manager that he's only going to see three to five candidates. Those are the only three three reasons why you're setting up the placement ratio is skewed up. Uh, so just keep that in mind. The second critical ratio is presentations to how many job orders you get. This is when you do a market presentation and you get a job order every so often. So every 10 presentations I do to a hiring manager, I get one job order. That would be a 10 to 1 send, uh, presentation to job order ratio. You want to get it down to 2 to 1, meaning you're that good at your presentation to get a job order from every other presentation you do. Another ratio to look at is your candidate presentations to first-time interviews. And what does this mean? This means how many times you do a candidate presentation to get them interested in an opportunity to how many interviews you actually get. Now, there's a lot of things that are out there to take a look at. Your dollars per market connect hour really tells you how good you are in this business. Um, three years ago, when I was rocking and rolling, my uh, dollars per every market connect hour I was on was $1,500 for every market connect hour I, I was actually on. What that means is that every hour, hour I am on the phone, I bring in $1,500 in revenue. This specific metric tells you how good you are at really what you do, but not really. And what I mean by that is if I make one phone call and get on the phone one hour a week and I'm at 1000 that means I make $1,000 in, in billable revenue a week and at the end of the month it's 5000 So that's not good. But it really gives you a good idea if you're on the phone over three hours a day how good you really are at this business. And job orders to search assignments or a job order ratio. The idea is how many job orders you get to how many search assignments you get. Those are critical ratios to take a look at. If you guys would like this presentation because we're going to run out of time, this is a good one to tell you how good I am at this business and what I need to do to get better at it. Here's the seven critical ratios I would focus on as this recovering economy happens. Number one, your market connect time. It starts there. If you're not doing over two hours a day, get you to two hours a day specifically in marketing. Uh, what I do is have everybody focus on marketing 9 to 12, and then the afternoon we focus on recruiting. We build up our day, so we're very focused on specific things during the day. But if I'm doing two-plus hours of marketing, I'm rocking and rolling. I know I'm getting good marketing connect time to make these successful. From a recruiting time in the afternoon, I'm actually recruiting for candidates, if I'm getting two-plus hours of phone time in the afternoon, I know I'm rocking and rolling there, too. So I know that that's enough time in the market to be successful. So those are two critical metrics to look at in this recovering economy. The third one is how many A job orders a week I'm getting. Now, an A job order means if I find a candidate, they're going to be hired. I don't have to compete against internal HR or another recruiter, but they're going to be hired. If I get one, even one A job order a week, and I just work on that one a job order a week, I'm going to be not only successful, I'm going to be super successful because it's a good job order. And, and, guys, we all know this. Every job order you're working on today is really spending your house payment two months from now. So evaluate the job order you're working on today and ask yourself, am I guaranteed to make money out of this job order I'm working on right now? Right now? If not, Look at number one, which is market connect hours and marketing time. Get more job orders. You need to get more job orders. Now, the fourth thing I look at is first time send outs that you get a weekly basis, and you've got to shoot for two to five. I know that I personally, if I get 20 send outs on a weekly basis, including both first time and second uh, time, I will be super successful at what I do. And so watch those critical ratios, set goals, and achieve those goals. And then uh, average fee is important. Right now, we're seeing average fee went down toward the beginning of the year, but the average fee is going up because companies are realizing that no longer can they find candidates. It's getting very, very difficult. Even though the unemployment rate is 9.6%, how do we find a quality candidate? Well, we know, as we just talked about, unemployment rate really 4%, 4.4%. It's tough to find A people. If they want to find an A person, they have to hire you. Somebody can go find that A talent. Common problems today. You know, let's go with these, and then we're going to end up in presentation. 
I feel like I'm on the phone all day, but I don't track phone time. And here's the biggest fallacy, if you're not tracking how much time you're on the phone. If you feel you're on the phone all day, you're probably on the phone two to two and a half hours of phone time. To get to three to three, three and a half hours, what you need to do is monitor it from a phone system. Because what happens is the time between phone calls is huge, with most people, most people who don't realize it. John, I'm on the phone all day. Great, send me your phone report. I look at it, they're on the phone an hour and a half. Well, it seems like I'm on the phone all day. Yeah, because you spend more time off the phone than you do on the phone. And you've got to start monitoring that very, very closely. Uh, second problem, recruiting most of the day, it's easy to get a hold of candidates, tough to get a hold of clients. Don't do what's easy. Typically, if you work on what you're not good at, which is the hardest stuff, you'll start getting really successful at recruiting as well. That's almost like anything in life. If you start really focusing on things you don't like to do, you'll probably be very good at what you want to be good at. So that's what you need to focus on. Too. Don't do what's easy for you. Do what you have to do. Make the numbers of dials. Get the phone time where it needs to go, and you'll be successful, specifically in this market. The key today is finding those A job orders, though. If you find that A job orders today and work on them, that you know you're going to make money if you find them and only work on those things, it'll double your income overnight. Let me repeat that. Let me repeat this because it's that important. If you only work on the A job orders today, meaning that if you find them, they will hire them no matter what, those job orders, the ones that you very rarely get, but if you only work on those and go get more of those, you will double your income overnight. It's funny how that works. We talked about that in my last uh, webinar. If you guys need the job order matrix to, to look at your job orders and tell how good they are, just send me an email, and I will uh, get you guys that, uh, that, that specific form so you can fill it out. How do I get the names to call for marketing? And recruiting is another question that comes up. Guys, you got a good got Good, very good at technology. You got to be an expert at technology. I have something called the research guide. Uh, the next webinar I'll be giving is probably going to be on how to plan properly for today and to have enough calls to be made. If you don't know how to make enough calls for today or your plan or use technology like LinkedIn, Broadlook, Zoom Info, all the free sources, send me an email. I'll give you the information. I'm running out of calls to make. That's simply a, a planning issue. And a lot of the problem is a planning issue. And if we look at recruiting, it's really three things. Come on, think about it. Number one in recruiting, there's planning. you got to plan. Number two is executing your plan. Number three is, am I good at what I'm doing? It's typically a problem, never a problem of number three. It's typically one or two. Either I'm not planning, not planning enough calls, or I don't execute the plan that I actually have. It's usually one of those two problems. The third problem of not being very good at what we do is very rarely a problem. Uh, may, maybe 33% of the time it's a problem, but very rarely is that a problem. So we got to plan. We've got to execute a plan, obviously. Running out of calls to make is just a planning issue. You've got to spend time to, the night before, spend an hour planning. Low connect time, under two hours a day. If you have low connect time, that simply means you don't have enough calls to make, number one. Or number two, you're not executing your plan. Or number three, you're not very good at establishing a relationship and creating value. Now let's talk about value for a second. Nobody's going to talk to you on the phone if you don't create any value on that phone, correct? If you go to the phone and say, hey, uh, Mr. Thompson, i got a job. I want to talk to you about a job. Are you interested in a job? Mr. Thompson's going to say, no, i got one. Thanks. Thank you very much. You have no phone time. You've got to learn to create value on the phone and give them a reason for listening to you. It's all about sizzle. It's not about the steak. It's not about the bacon. It's about the smell. You want to hear it? You want to smell it. You've got to be good at sizzling, creating value on the phone. And if you can create more value on the phone, they're going to talk to you more. Your phone time will go up. And you get more people for your recruiting. You'll get more clients because of your market. marketing, your marketing uh, connect time. Common problems. High first time send out to placement ratio is, is high for a lot of people. And the reason being is one of three problems. We already talked about it. Number one is my job orders suck. If we can use that term, suck. Look up Google Dictionary, see what that really means. Two is my matching skills are not very good, meaning if you want XYZ and purple, I'm finding you XYZ in black or orange or something else, but not XYZ in purple. My matching skills aren't that good. Or number three, I haven't set expectations with my hiring manager that they're only going to see three people. And if I don't set expectations, my hiring manager is going to say this. You know, I, I really like them, Bonnie, but, you know, do you have any more people I can look at? Well, if you said those expectations up front, they wouldn't obviously be set. Low average fees for the marketplace. Common problem a lot of people are having. 
that means we're not showing value in actually what we're doing. You've got to share with the client the value you bring to the table, that you bring A players. The hidden people who are hidden to job boards, because they're not looking at monster.com dice, ladders, and all the rest of them that are out there. They're hidden, which means you've got to go in there and get them directly by offering value. And your fee can be as high as you want it to be if you get good at this business. You have high-quality candidates but low job orders. That simply means you don't market enough. You need more market connect time. You've got to talk to clients a lot more. But I don't like marketing. Yeah, if you do what you're not comfortable with, you'll be very, very good at this business. High job orders and low candidates. That means you're very good and you're comfortable talking to clients. You just need to spend more time recruiting more time recruiting and offer, offer more value. High B and C job orders but low A job orders, that's very common. Specifically, no. A lot of people have job orders, but they're not very good once they analyze them. We need to do one of two things. We take those job orders and make them A job orders, and that's simply by going back to the hiring manager and saying this. Mr. Hiring Manager, I understand that I've been working on your VP of Sales Search, but a couple things that are causing us from finding the A players for you. Let me tell you what they are. Number one, your salary is 50% lower than the marketplace. We said based on salary.com in the survey we had that salary has to be 120 to 150. You're right now at $60,000. Is there anything we can do to change that compensation to allow us to get you the A players in the marketplace? You can take a B and C job order and then convert it into an A job order by going back to the client and changing those things, which will in turn change your success as a recruiter. Now, you can easily do that stuff. It's really up to you. We're running out of time, and I'm going to quickly go through the rest of us. Everyone says hiring freeze or they're having other recruiters, paying low fees. You just got to prove your value still in the marketplace. I have something called the e-recruiter dashboard that we use here in my office, and other offices use it as well. It's hooked directly to PCR. So with PCR reports, my people send me data, my client companies send me data, I can plug it in, and my recruiters can actually tell how good they are at what they do. And this is called well, I said the magic of metrics because it tells them it's like almost that's put on a scoreboard. When a professional baseball team is, it tells all the statistics. This comes out once a week, and a recruiter can say what's high, what's low, what they can work on, what they don't need to work on. But I just want to let everybody know it's out there. And with the beautiful technology of, of main sequence and PCR, they can do anything. And what happens is three things come out. Number is the dashboard comes out. They share with them what they need to work on. The second thing that comes out with its automatic report is the things that are below 80%, which is the things they need to work on. And it starts with the most important things first. And then also it shows trend lines of what is going good, what's going bad. Why is this important to you? Recruiting is a science. You need a methodology of helping you determine what's going wrong and what's going right. If I own a recruiting office and I'm managing more than two people, I need to see data. I want to tell before one of my recruiters goes into a slump. I want somebody telling me there's a leading indicator that's sharing with them that they're going into a slump so I can stop them. I can stop them from that slump and helping with the activity they need to get them out of that slump. And with the e-recruiter dashboard here, it's a magical tool that allows them to manage themselves. So as a manager, I don't have to say, hey, Billy, I need you to get on the phone more. Billy already will know that based on the numbers that you're taking a look at. But these numbers are available for all recruiters and recruiting offices as well. And guess what? It's right out of PCR main sequence. It's absolutely beautiful. Universal truths. We've got five minutes, and we're done here, guys, and I'll let you guys go get on the phone and make some stuff happen. Guys, number one, your recruiting business has to be open most of the day, which means you've got to be on the phone three and a half hours or more. The people who bill, um, Patrick Sylvester, who's billed three to five million a year. Uh, for 10 years in a row, I've billed over a million dollars a year, a million, million and a half. My phone time averaged over five hours a day. Patrick Sylvester, over six hours a day. Most million-dollar producers in the permanent placement world are on the phone four hours a day or more. Not that that's a magic sequence, but they're in a marketplace long enough to be successful. That's number one thing I'd focus on if there's anything else that's out there. It allows you to be successful because you're open for business most of the day. Two, quantity solves all problems. It's not about quality, guys. Not. It will be eventually. But if you don't have enough quantity going on, it means the numbers of calls, numbers of dials, phone calls, numbers of candidates, you cannot be you, can, you don't have enough volume to be, have quality in this business. So it all starts with quantity. And quantity solves all problems. It solves your quality issue, too. Third thing, planning will be the foundation of your success or failure. If you don't take off at 4.30 and spend one hour planning to make sure you have the right calls played for the next day, start there. Start planning. Start planning properly. 
I want you guys to be multimillionaires in this business. I want every recruiter here to make 2011 their best year in possible. I would love it if I got emails in February, March, at the end of the first quarter that says, I just had the best quarter of my life. I'm ca ca uh, cashing in commission checks of twenty-five, thirty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a monthly basis, which I have people who work for me that do that. I would love you to be the same person. Help me with that. Plan. Be successful. Plan the day before. Spend an hour a day planning to make sure you're good at what you do. Now, the more value you show your clients, the better your numbers will look. Guys, the better value you bring to the table, the more they're going to want to talk to you. If you bring A players to the table every day, your client's going to be calling you all the time. You won't be calling him. If you bring great jobs to your candidates and find out what their goals are in life and their career goals and bring those jobs to your, your candidates, they're going to be calling you all the time. You can make this a simple business if you wanted to, but you've got to offer value. Give them a reason to call you, not you call them. Quantity comes before quality, obviously. You've got to have the quantity in this business to have the quality, which is why 9 out of 10 people don't make it. They don't get that. When somebody comes into this business, the first thing a manager should say to them is this. This business is going to be like, a, this could be like selling credit cards over the phone. You're going to think you work for Visa for the first 90 days because you're going to be dialing for dollars, making call after. You're going to hate me. You're going to hate this business. But that's exactly why you're going to love recruiting in 120 days is because you're going to be conditioned to do this business. You'll have quantity enough to get successful and enough time in the marketplace. Now we can take your skill set and make you the best in the world. And if you want to see commission checks of 25, 30, 40, 50 K a month, come with me. You will achieve what you focus on, guys. Don't worry about the PC. Don't worry about all the other stuff going on. Focus on the things you need to do on a daily basis. Plan properly. Make the calls. You'll be successful. If you address the current objections in this economy, you will be unstoppable. And you will. As recovering economy comes out, here's what's going on. Uh, I really like to take your fee agreement from 25% to 20%, so you've got to be good at addressing objections in this economy. You have to be. In conclusion, the order in it to attain your metrics is important. Here's what I mean by that. Don't worry about it. If you're new in this business, if you, if you are not hitting three and a half to four hours of phone time on a daily basis, first thing I'd ask you, don't worry about anything else. Don't worry about your send out the placement ratio. Don't worry about anything but getting your phone time up and number of dials up. That's the first thing I'd work on. When I look at the metrics for anybody or any office, I want to see there's quantity going on. Because if I know there's quantity going on, they're in their marketplace long enough for the, them to be successful. And if they're in their place long enough and they've got the phone time, ah, then I can work on quality. I can work on skill sets. I can work on getting them better at what they do. I can take that send out the placement ratio from 10 to 1 down to 3 to, 3 to 1, almost overnight. But without that quantity on the go, can't help them. Can't help them. The power of attitude is so important. So here's what we do in my office. When somebody's new in the first 90 days and they hit 80 calls a day, we stop, we celebrate, we do high five, we do chest bumps, we do it all because it's fun. And you know what? They should because we're conditioning them to do this business the right way, which is being on the phone, be in business so they can stay in business for the rest of their lifetime. And this is a lifetime business. But we want to celebrate. Once I hit my 80 calls to 120 calls a day, then I look for three and a half hours. And when they hit three and a half hours of phone time, we celebrate, we high five, we chest bump, we get crazy, we get nuts. Because we're celebrating a victory because they're going to become great at recruiting. Not only great at recruiting, they're going to achieve their life dreams with recruiting because we're starting them there. Then from there, I look at number of conversations. And I take a look at how many conversations they're really having and the quality of those conversations. So I build, and once they hit their metrics numbers and every one of those things, they move on and they continually have to do that week after week. We know they're developing a professional recruiter. And it's awesome. You gotta celebrate those. You set daily goals, watch your metrics. My people at noon look at the phone time, they look at everything, number of dials at noon, just to see where they're at to make sure they're on track for the day. You gotta celebrate those, set daily goals. You'll hit your yearly goals, guys, if you hit your daily goals. So focus on the daily ones. And don't leave until you hit your activity targets for the day. Focus on the metrics and you will see dollars, there's no questions about it. Guys, I know metrics is a tough subject. I know we've talked a lot. Matter of fact, at the NAPS conference last week, I went over the, the 10 critical metrics you need to watch in your office. But the problem was none of them really mattered because most of the offices in this industry are hitting the two basic ones, which is seeing market connect time happen and number of dials. Because without those two, nothing else matters. Guys, my email address is john, J-O-N, at jonathanscott.com.
Send me anything you want to. You guys get on my website, johnbartos.com, www.johnbartos.com. If you have any questions, you can send me a question right now. We'll address any questions you potentially have. And you know what? I'm telling you, metrics is not difficult. If you focus on the most important ones first and build from there, you can. Uh, my next Fordyce article, which will come out, I think, in December, is going to be managing with metrics. If you go back into the uh, Fordyce articles that I wrote two years ago, I wrote an article called The Magic of Metrics. Read those articles because they'll give you further in-depth information on what you can do to be successful, specifically with the things you can do. I, I'm excited for it because I think this year can be the best year of your lives. Recruiting, I tell you, the fallacy of recruiting is I only have to be on a phone a limited amount of time. And here's what a false positive is in metrics. It means you're hitting big numbers, but you're never on the phone. That means your marketplace is pretty darn hot. For most of us, that's not the truth. So we've got to get back to being on the phone as much as we can, hitting our dial numbers, and then we'll have the ability or the chance to make recruiting the best business in the world. If there's any questions you guys got, send me a, send me a message. My email, john, J-O-N, at jonathanscott.com. I want you guys to have the best 2011 and the best end of 2010 in your lifetime. Recruiting for me has changed my life, uh, my business. It's the funnest industry in the world. It's the best industry. There's no other industry out there that is good as recruiting. We change people's lives overnight. We help companies and change them overnight, and we get paid lots of money if we're good at what we do. There's not another business out there that has a feel-good three-way like this does. Guys, love recruiting. Study it. Learn it like a professional baseball player. You need to know information. Send me information. I'll look forward to seeing you guys. Send me an email sometime next year letting me know that recruiting is the best industry in the world and I'm having the best year of my life. On behalf of Main Sequence, this is John Bartos. And I tell you what, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful year, wonderful next year. You need something, send me an email. One question came up that said, mention that Scott, uh, slides will be forthcoming in the next day or so. You'll have all these slides probably within the next 24 hours, and I'll post them on johnbartos.com, www.johnbartos.com in the library section. So let's go to the library. Go under there under um, the actual title, The Seven Metrics to Worship in a recovering economy, and that will be on there. Guys, have a great day. Let's go knock them dead.